Why can't you? Because she's not your friend. She's my apprentice. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 cartoon TV plot twists you didn't see coming. Ashi? I... I didn't do this. Yes, you did. For this list, we're looking at the animated scenes that caught viewers completely off guard, for better or worse. Needless to say that if you haven't seen any of these jaw-dropping moments, there will be spoilers. Which plot twist threw you for a loop? Let us know in the comments. Just be sure to say spoiler alert. Hey Mojoholics! For a chance to win cash prizes, play our live daily trivia challenges every day at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern only at watchmojo.com slash play. Number 20. Will Harper, Young Justice Near the end of Young Justice's first season, Roy Harper was finally welcomed into the Justice League. Finally, Green Arrow welcomes his former protege, Speedy, now known as Red Arrow, to this roster of heroes. <laughs> Way to go, Roy! At last he has his wish. The first of us to make it. However, fulfilling his dream just unravels one plot twist after another. First of all, he was unknowingly a sleeper agent programmed to infiltrate the League. What's even more shocking? He wasn't the real Roy Harper. In reality, he was a clone to replace the actual Speedy who was abducted years before the series started. This Roy Harper had no idea he was a clone or a traitor, and his subconscious programming drove him to become League-worthy. After he found the real Roy, the clone eventually retired from being a hero and left to make a new life for himself as Will, showing that although he was created for nefarious purposes, he could rise above all that and forge his own identity. I don't want to be the cause of more conflict between you two. I'd understand if you never wanted to lay eyes on me again. I don't know. Number 19. April. DuckTales. Throughout the DuckTales reboot, we believed that Webby's only family was her grandmother, Mrs. Beakley. Granny gave up her job as a spy so she could raise me. I never really knew my parents before they- That's it! I bet your spy granny is hiding something about your actual family that explains why we exist! However, the series finale changed everything Webby thought about her life. For starters, Beakley isn't really her grandmother. She found the infant Webby and took her in for her protection. But the biggest twist of all? Webby is actually a clone made from the DNA of Scrooge McDuck. Who is Webby made from? Why, your old Uncle Scrooge McDuck, of course. <gasps> <gasps> you fellas all knew that, right, you did? For years, Webby idolized the McDucks, and they became a surrogate family to her. But to find out not only that she's related by blood to her idols, and that Scrooge himself is her genetic father, really takes the cake. It just goes to show how deep a familial bond can really be. Number 18. Unicron the Destroyer – Transformers Prime In the Season 1 finale of Transformers Prime, a planetary alignment is having a strange effect on the Earth. Natural disasters are popping up left and right, and a volcano is erupting… Dark Energon? But Dark Energon is rumored to be the blood of the Cybertronian god of chaos Unicron, so why would it be pumping out of the Earth? In a shocking turn of events, Unicron himself is the Earth's core. A Cybertronian heartbeat? How is that possible? A heart pumps blood. There's nothing inside the Earth to pump except… blood of Unicron. When he was defeated eons ago, the Earth was formed around his dormant body, and only an unlikely alliance can assure he never awakens again. This was a very unique way to bring Unicron into the series, and only strengthened the connection between Earth and Cybertron. Primus became one with the very core of our planet, creating life through the well of all sparks, while Unicron was never to be heard from again. Until now. Number 17. Cartman's Real Father, South Park. Remember when Cartman had Scott Tennerman's parents killed and tricked Scott into eating their remains? And of course, feed you your chili. Do you like it? Do you like it, Scott? I call it Mr. and Mrs. Tennerman chili. It's a testament to how twisted Cartman can be, but the story doesn't end there. Years later, Scott gets his revenge on Cartman by dropping a major bombshell. He is actually Cartman's half-brother, meaning that Cartman unknowingly murdered his own father. Jack Tenerman was your father. You killed your own father, and then you fed him to your half-brother! One of the show's biggest mysteries was who Cartman's father was. Well, we got our answer in the most gruesome of ways. 
Naturally, Cartman is horrified, not because of his own actions, but because this means he's half ginger. My dad was Scott Tenement's dad! Don't you guys realize what that means? Yeah, dude, we, we know what it means. My dad was a ginger! Even when facing the consequences of his horrific deeds, Cartman may never change. Number 16, Nibbler and Fry, Futurama. We all know Fry's story, but what if his cryogenic freezing was no accident? Fry getting sent to the future was actually a calculated plan by Nibbler. He made the prank call that brought Fry to the lab, and he caused Fry to trip and fall into the freezer. The reason he did all this was because Fry was the only one who could save the future from a massive threat. Our sages foresee that in a thousand years, for one moment, the fate of the universe will depend on you. Since you will not live that long, I must freeze you now. Even though Fry doesn't like being used, a lot of good came out of Nibbler's interference. He found a better life in the future and the woman of his dreams, Leela. So in a way, meddling with his past was the best thing to ever happen to him. You know what, Fry? I don't care if you're not the most important person in the universe. It really makes me happy to see you right now. Number 15, Aku and Ashi, Samurai Jack. Hold it, time out. Really? There's more Aku here besides me. Ashi was part of the Daughters of Aku, a cult of assassins dedicated to the demonic dictator himself with one singular goal, to kill Samurai Jack. However, traveling with Jack allows her to break away from Aku's influence, but it turns out her connection to the demon is deeper than even she knows. A true daughter of Aku! No! In reality, she is Aku's daughter biologically, his demon essence being a part of her since childbirth. This means that not only does she possess Aku's powers, but their connection allows him to use her as a puppet to try and slay Jack for good. Ashi. Ashi. Please. Ashi, fight. Fortunately, Ashi manages to break free, and her new powers enable Jack to finally put an end to Aku's terror. Number 14, Hot Girl's Real Mission, Justice League. While Hot Girl claims that her coming to Earth was an accident, she becomes one of the founding members of the Justice League. However, in season two, we learn the true motives for her arrival. She's a military spy for her people, the Thanagarians, scouting the planet in preparation for a massive invasion. Don't fight us, we're trying to help you. Do you ever stop lying? It was for your own good, you've got to trust me. Why? Whose side are you really on? While she redeems herself in the end, the damage is already done. She lied to her friends and sold out the planet that saw her as a hero. After that, the only honorable thing she can do is leave the League behind. I've spent the last five years torn between my feelings and my duty. I won't ask you to do the same. Therefore, I am resigning from the Justice League, effective immediately. She returns to them eventually, but it takes a while to restore her good name with the League and the public. Number 13, Zuko's grandfather, Avatar the Last Airbender. For the longest time, Zuko is sure that defeating Avatar Aang would help him realize his destiny. But one earth-shattering discovery shakes his entire worldview. First, we learn how his paternal great-grandfather Sozin betrayed his childhood friend and Aang's predecessor, Avatar Roku. Please. Without you, all my plans are suddenly possible. I have a vision for the future, Roku. But almost everyone knows that story. What Zuko didn't know was that Roku was his maternal great-grandfather. Suddenly, Zuko's inner struggle becomes much clearer. Both his great-grandfather's conflict symbolizes his own inner turmoil between deciding which path to follow, good or evil. Because of your legacy, you alone can cleanse the sins of our family and the Fire Nation. If any good comes out of this existential crisis, it's that it finally sets Zuko along the path of redemption to help Aang finally end the war. Number 12, Project Batman Beyond, Justice League Unlimited. It turns out that Terry and Bruce's relationship goes beyond a teacher-student bond. Terry is actually Bruce's biological son. For context, Amanda Waller secretly used Bruce's DNA to alter Terry's father's reproductive system, ensuring that his son would be a worthy successor as Batman. Actually, it was a nanotech solution programmed to rewrite his reproductive material into an exact copy of Bruce Wayne's. A little over a year later, 
your mother gave birth to you. She even schemed to have Terry relive the tragedy that kickstarted Bruce's crime-fighting career. While her plan didn't go as intended, Terry would eventually become the new Batman. Not as Bruce's carbon copy, but as someone truly worthy of carrying out his legacy. This episode serves as the conclusion to Batman Beyond's story, and it ends the tale on a high note by giving Terry and Bruce the satisfying endings they both deserve. Better suit up. You should eat something first. Keep up your strength. When I get back, you're a stubborn piece of work, you know that. Just like my old man. Number 11. The Utram Shredder – Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles None of you will leave here alive! During a brawl at TCRI, the turtles band together to bring the Shredder down, only to be greeted by a nasty surprise. Shredder is actually a fugitive Utram alien. This little pest went on a rampage against his fellow aliens, and then escaped to Earth where he took on his foe identity, inspired by the legend of the actual Shredder of old, and vowed to conquer the Utrams, and anyone who got in his way. Let us just say the metal fell from the heavens. While he's technically not the genuine article, he took this stolen identity and made it his own, as the turtle's most formidable and ruthless adversary. It'd be safe to say that he was the one true Shredder. And Utram? Number 10. Ice King's Past Life – Adventure Time Hello, my name is Simon Petrikov. I am recording this tape so that people will know my story. Finn and Jake come across a video diary about the Ice King and make a jaw-dropping discovery about their wizarding nemesis. A thousand years ago, Ice King was a normal human named Simon Petrikov, whose life was transformed the day he found the magic crown. He was gifted with ice powers, but his sanity completely crumbled. Visions. I fought with them, shouted at them until I realized it wasn't real, it was the crown! This adds a depressing new depth to the icy princess-chasing psychopath. He once had a normal life, a beautiful fiancé, whom he ironically called his princess, and was even best friends with a young, not-yet-vampire queen, Marceline. Tragically, there's little hope for him remembering the happier life he once led. Please forgive me for whatever I do when I don't remember you. Wow, I wrote that! Number 9. The Butterfly Family Secret – Star vs. the Forces of Evil Who's Festivia? Don't worry, we'll get to the bottom of this. It turns out that Eclipse of Butterfly, the Queen of Darkness, and Princess Star's supposed ninth great-grandmother had a monster hybrid daughter, and yet she does not show up in the Butterfly family scroll. What did you do with my daughter? The Butterfly matriarchs hope to squeeze the truth out of the Magic High Commission at Eclipse's trial, but what they find out is a doozy. Eclipse's daughter was to inherit the throne, but she was switched at birth with another baby. Having been kept in the dark for so long, Star is horrified to learn that she may not be actual royalty, and that her family stole the throne from its true owner, but would giving it back later really help things? Number 8. Slade's Apprentice – Teen Titans In Season 2, we get to meet Tara, a super-powered teenage girl who struggles with controlling her abilities. I know you have trouble controlling your powers, and we can help. You told him? I didn't. You promised. You lied to me! You lied! She disappears for most of the season before returning to join the Titans, now fully in control of her powers. However, what they don't know is that Terra had a little help from their arch-nemesis Slade. He taught her to control her powers. In exchange, she became his spy to destroy the Titans from the inside. It's the truth. Terra. Why? Because you could never give her what she needs. While we don't condone her betraying her friends, try to understand. She was emotionally volatile and desperate, which led her down a path of self-destruction. She eventually makes amends for her sins, but at a heavy cost. Number 7. The Truth About Amon – The Legend of Korra How did your brother end up becoming Amon? In her early days as the Avatar, Korra found herself up against the mysterious Amon, a revolutionary planning to equalize Republic City by taking away all Bender's bending abilities, thanks to some unknown mystical power. Your firebending is gone. However, after learning bits and pieces of his family history, it's revealed that Amon is a bender himself, 
a bloodbender, and his gift is actually a bloodbending technique that severs bending abilities. You boys have this power inside of you, and I will teach you to master it. While his image is a complete lie, his mission was real. He grew to hate bending after being pushed too hard as a child by his father, and the pressure turned a once innocent kid into a cold and calculating political terrorist. I told you I would destroy you. Number 6. Timmy's Secret Wish The Fairly Odd Parents. According to the Fairy Council, your history of dangerous wishes makes you the worst fairy god kid ever. What? Timmy Turner has been put on trial for being the worst godchild in history. After a rocky start, it seems as though Timmy may have finally won the case until Foop drops a major bombshell. Timmy made an illegal secret wish. He hasn't made a million wishes after all. He's made a million and one! The wish was that everyone would stop aging so he could keep his fairies. And it was made 50 years ago, meaning it's been five decades since the very first pilot episode where Timmy first got Cosmo and Wanda. Oh, all right. I did make a secret wish. Cosmo doesn't remember granting it because I wished he'd forget. This was definitely a unique take on the never-aging cartoon character's cliché, but it gets completely swept under the rug and resolved by the end of the episode. Because status quo. We overturned our previous ruling. <gasps> you may have your fairies back. <laughs> Number 5. Chad is a double agent. Codename Kids Next Door. Ahem. What are you doing here? Chad Dixon, also known as Number 274, was considered the best there is in the Kids Next Door organization, until he supposedly turned traitor in the wake of his 13th birthday. I... I don't know what you're talking about. Since then, he became a recurring teenage villain, forming a heated rivalry with Number 1. But had he really betrayed his comrades? In the penultimate episode, it's revealed that Chad was a double agent for the kids next door, and that every time he and Number 1 have clashed, he was secretly helping them from the sidelines, adding a new perspective to all of his defeats. Practically every mission you and Sector V did, I was right there, helping from the sidelines. As he departs, his loyalty no longer questioned. He leaves his former pupil one last cryptic clue. There are others. Number 4. The Real Seymour Skinner the Simpsons. You're not Seymour Skinner. Many say this is where The Simpsons began to decline in quality. In the midst of his 20th anniversary, Principal Skinner makes a shocking announcement. He has been lying about his identity. It's true. I'm... <sighs> I'm... an imposter. In reality, he was a street punk who served in the platoon of the real Seymour Skinner, who became like a mentor to him. When his sergeant was declared dead, the faker ended up living Skinner's life and dreams in honor of his memory. While some twists can be clever, like the mystery of who shot Mr. Burns, this revelation on a well-developed character came out of nowhere, and we were expected to pretend that none of it ever happened afterwards. My real name is Armin Tamzarian. <gasps> <laughs> Number 3. Mr. Poopy Butthole, Rick and Morty It's another typical day in the Smith household. Rick and Morty's family finds themselves dealing with shape-shifting parasites that trick them with false memories of wild and zany friends and relatives. So, you know, business as usual. There's no such thing as an Uncle Steve. That is an alien parasite. <gasps> but I've known him my whole life. No, you haven't, Jerry. At the end of the episode, one of these strange friends, Mr. Poopy Butthole, pops up again. And Beth shoots him thinking he's just another parasite. But he's no parasite. He's real, and Beth mortally wounds him. Uh, my, my wife shot a longtime family friend. Don't worry, Mr. Poopy Butthole survives and becomes a recurring face in the show. Still, this is a hilarious subversion of expectations, and the way it plays out is shocking both in the revelation and how horrifying and intense the reactions feel. Oh my Why god! Do this, Beth? It's not supposed to hurt, I, I thought. Ooh -wee. Number two, the author's identity, Gravity Falls. What the? Ever since the series' beginning, one question has been on the minds of Gravity Falls fans. Who wrote the mysterious journal that Dipper found? It turns out that the journal was just one of three, all chronicled by Grunkle Stan's long-lost twin brother, Stanford Pines. Is this the part where one of us faints? Oh, I am so on it, dude. Ford became obsessed with the supernatural activity surrounding Gravity Falls and wrote down all of his findings in three journals, only to leave them behind when he vanished through an interdimensional portal during a quarrel with his twin. Stanley! Stanley, help me! Oh no, what do I do? Stanley! 
Headley, do something! Headley! The real payoff for this revelation was how cleverly hidden the mystery was. A few subtle clues in the background, plus a hilarious misdirection from the show creator himself. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Real Rose Quartz – Steven Universe I watched the lead of the Crystal Gems Rose Quartz shatter pink diamond! It was believed that Rose Quartz, the loving leader of the Crystal Gems and Steven's mom, shattered Pink Diamond to protect Earth, with a few hints suggesting otherwise. It's because it doesn't make sense! In Season 5, however, we learn that Rose didn't shatter Pink Diamond. Rose was Pink Diamond. What? She masqueraded as a Rose Quartz to spark up the rebellion faked her own shattering to end the war, and forced Pearl to keep everything a secret. She lied to us! She lied about everything! While it's touching that Pink gave up her royal status and inspired countless gems to fight for Earth, she lied to her own allies, pulled everyone into the crossfire of her fellow Diamond's wrath, and called everything the Crystal Gems believed into question. So, Pink Diamond, huh? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.